once an experimental afterthought in the athletic landscape, it is now America's most popular sport. Love it or hate it, you can't deny its impact on American pop culture. It fills our TV screens each weekend in the fall, and its annual culmination, the Super Bowl, is the most viewed sporting event in America, and continually pulls in millions of people across the globe. Anyway, you can see here the game has changed quite a lot over the years. It started as a peculiar hybrid of rugby and soccer. It went through its transitionary phases, the invention of the forward pass, penalties that tend to favor the offense, etc., until it slowly turned into the flashy, pass-heavy game we see today. Why is this important? It's critical information to know because it sets the stage perfectly for a topic that's very relevant to all athletic activities, injuries. Now you might say, doesn't every sport have its fair share of injuries? Anytime you play a sport, you put yourself at risk for something to happen. And this is certainly true. However, football is unique with just how integrated injuries are in the game and have been from the very beginning. That may seem like common sense, right? But football's biggest league today, the National Football League, may not want it to seem that way. Here are some clips from the movie Concussion to illustrate my point. Found a disease that no one has ever seen. Repetitive head trauma chokes the brain. The NFL does not want to talk to you. You turned on the lights and gave their biggest boogeyman a name. You're going to war with a corporation that owns a day of the week. No proof was presented today because there simply isn't any. They have to listen to us. This is bigger than they are. They continue to deny my work. Men continue to die. This clip, albeit dramatized for effect, does an excellent job at telling the story of how the NFL has hidden and outright denied the existence of devastating injuries like CTE in order to protect their brand image and keep football around. They also have tried to downplay events like the headhunting scandal, where coaches would pay players to try and hurt members of opposing teams. How does this relate to video games, you might ask? That's an excellent question. The reason is that video games and football have been intertwined for decades now, really ever since video games entered the mainstream market. Consequently, the views of injuries in real-life football inevitably cross over into video games, since they are virtual representations of what happens on the gridirons across America. The first widely released football game was simply titled Football, and released for the Atari 2600 in 1978. One of the first big football games was John Madden Football 92, which was the sequel to the original John Madden Football. This game was in many ways very realistic for its time, especially considering the fact it did not have license from the NFL to use player likenesses, team logos, and uniforms. However, it had in-depth plays from real NFL teams and a wide variety of fun teams to play as in unique stadiums and arenas. It also featured injuries that happened live in each game. It did have a, let's say, unique approach to handling these injuries. See what I mean? The developers of this game attributed the ambulance feature to a software glitch, but it's questionable how they let such an obvious defect stay in the game. Anyway, maybe it isn't fair to judge so harshly for something like this. Maybe it was just a mistake. Maybe, when given another opportunity, game developers would treat injuries more delicately and respectfully. Maybe this is a recurring thing. 
NFL Blitz was originally released in 1997 as an arcade cabinet, and later ported to game consoles like the PlayStation 1 and the Nintendo 64 for home release in 1998. This game would go on to be a cornerstone of 90s video games, and brilliantly distill 90s NFL fandom to its core. Brutal, punishing hits and lots of lightning-paced action. In other words, it maintained the hard-hitting nature of football's past while integrating with the future of intense passing and much faster and bolder pacing. The emphasis on this game was the hits. You had late hits, extremely exaggerated and violent tackles, and a complete and deliberate absence of penalties. As you saw in the game's cover, no refs, no rules, no mercy. This game was quintessential Smash Mouth football, and unapologetic to its core. While it's been discovered that the NFL did have the developers tone down the game a significant amount from its original state, and had doubts they would even want to give them the NFL's license at all, the NFL still had no problem profiting when this game made millions and sold countless copies nationwide. The early 2000s ushered in a new era of football. Building on the fervor of the 90s, publishers struck while the iron was hot and made another series of exaggerated football, NFL Street. This game is self-explanatory, but it essentially takes the style of games like NFL Blitz, gives it an upgraded graphics package, and strips it of anything resembling real football. The playbooks are very limited, and the same for all teams, and the players don't even wear uniforms. They're in street clothes and wearing jerseys, and often play in decrepit locations like alleys and subway stations. Like NFL Blitz, it also does not shy away from brutal hits and over-the-top animations, as you can see in these clips. Once again, though, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. NFL Blitz and NFL Street are obviously not meant to be taken too seriously. They're arcade-style games that deliberately exaggerate the game for the sake of entertainment. To say they're not realistic is missing the point. However, as you'll see here, video games' treatment of injuries in football extends to the modern simulation genre as well. As bad as this looks, this is still much less exaggerated than the two previous games we've discussed. It's also important to note this happens in real-life football games too, so it's not just featured in this game for no reason. It also sets the stage for the next game on our list, because while it does not allow players' helmets to fly off, it still includes the violent hits that resemble what we saw before. This game is over 10 years old. Maybe a video game from the current year will be better. I'm killing it like a blind man reading. I'm feeling it like oh, yeah. here comes the oh, oh, here comes the oh, oh, here comes the y'all don't really want it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here comes the oh, oh, here comes the oh, oh, here comes the y'all don't really want it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here comes the oh, oh, here comes the oh, oh, here comes the y'all don't really want it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here comes the oh, oh, here comes the oh, oh, here comes the y'all. Let's break this down. This is still more tame than the hits seen routinely in games like Blitz and Street. They're fairly realistic hits, and the players react in reasonable ways. However, this does not mean they're completely perfect. For one thing, in online play of Madden 20, there are no injuries at all. This means despite how hard a player may get hit, it means absolutely nothing in terms of whether they're removed from the game. This creates a culture where you can downplay how injuries even happen at all. If you don't see them in the game, it's very easy to attribute this thinking to real life as well. There are also very limited penalties for things like unnecessary roughness or roughing the passer. This invariably encourages the player to go for hit sticks every single time, because the only penalty is you might not hit them.
on everything we've covered so far, it's clear that the NFL and football as a collective have a bad image of promoting a culture where injuries are either ignored in lieu of entertaining plays, or actively downplayed and swept under the rug. And video games are an essential part of bringing this ideology to a whole new generation of viewers and gamers, including people like myself that have grown up both playing football video games and watching football on TV. It seems insurmountable, but what can football and its video games do to recover from this horrible image? revolutionize the way we play football. It fundamentally changed things, like how players kick the ball off, and allowing for two forward passes in the same play under special circumstances, to reduce injuries while avoiding the game-stopping activities and inefficiencies that have plagued the NFL for years. The name of their game is to change football to be more entertaining and safer, but still maintain the heart and soul of the game we all love so dearly. The future of football will more likely be a safer, faster game than anything we've seen before. Leagues like the XFL have been at the forefront of such changes, and it's very likely the NFL will make similar changes in response to this incoming pressure. This shift in style will invariably be reflected in future football video games to come, as certain types of hits and tackles continue to become outlawed and certain plays fall by the wayside. These changes will be visible in the games we play and see on shelves everywhere. As a tribute to how football games have changed already in the decades since they've become mainstream, let's sit back and take a look at the progress these games have already made. Starting with games like football for the Atari 2600 and spanning all the way to Madden 20's release, we've covered a lot of history here today. It's amazing to see how both football itself and its video games have evolved in the decades since these first releases. Although significant progress has been made to accurately represent injuries in this time, there's still a long way to go. Judging by what changes have been made to this point though, I have no doubt the future will have great things in store. In the face of adversity, we've always pushed through. We've faced far greater challenges than this, and we'll be well suited to continue this fight in the future. After all, there's no greater link in our culture than the things we play and interact with. Video games have the power to make change. Will we make the changes necessary in the coming years? I have faith, but only time will tell. I'm Jacob Kaufman, and thanks for watching. <laughs>